taking your processor. Well, you think you're all that with your core duo, mumbo jumbo. You, me, town square, high noon. If you ain't yeller. always crash. I don't use the term Dear Diary for anything anymore, maybe because it has that superficial tone attached to it. Dear Diary, it just doesn't work for me. 
August 11th. March 18th. I don't think I've ever been this frustrated by how other people perceive me and my biraciality before. That whole half concept I never really bought into. Yeah, a lot of people call themselves half of a race, but I stopped after a while. Race isn't a math game, it's like... it's like sugar water. You don't get one half sugar and one half water when you mix the two together. You just get sugar water. June 23rd. I was honestly expecting one of those welcome to the rest of your life signs after graduation. Unfortunately or not, the only life lesson I ended up learning was... I've learned that sometimes my assertiveness when it comes to my biraciality can put people off, especially males. Sometimes I think that maybe if I were a more agreeable female, like the type promoted in Seventeen and Cosmo and Teen People, I'd have a few more male admirers. Those magazines could probably give me advice on how to act interested in what your man is saying, or maybe even how to make the perfect orgasm expression. Then I laughed to myself and realized I'd much rather be alone for the rest of my life than lose the ability to think for myself. March 13th. There's a certain vulnerability that comes stapled to our skin, to our eyes, and to our hair. Being biracial, some people make the assumption that I'm somehow mentally tortured when it comes to matters of race. You would have to think that died out in the 90s. There's this notion, this theory, that I can't define myself and so others must define me. Asking me what I am rather than who I am is already making a slightly dehumanizing statement in my mind. What races are you mixed with, or what ethnicity are your parents, are questions I usually prefer. People who ask me what are you are often placed on one of the thousands of my mental list. Unfortunately, this list seems to be growing. When I was a little kid, and much cuter, I smiled these big, wide, killer smiles. People just thought I was really happy, but honestly, I just wanted my eyes to be more slanted. Then maybe people would stop confusing me for Mexican, never Salvadorian or Puerto Rican, and they'd finally see me as Filipina. November 5th. Tanya told me that Filipino shouldn't be spelled with an F or a P, since that's uniquely Western and not Filipino. So now I write Filipino instead of Filipino, my own little rebellion against the man, but I can't shrug off the feeling that people think I'm spelling it wrong because I'm only half of the race and therefore inadequate.
My parents always tell me this story when we get nostalgic and start talking about me as a crazy little kid. Your father always left you out in the sun as a baby, right by the pool. You were about two or three years old. Your mother would have a heart attack and tell me to bring you back inside. He'd leave you out there for hours. She thought you'd get skin cancer or something. I told her blacks don't get skin cancer as much as everyone else. Then my mom would say, yeah, but she's not completely black. July 7th. It's become part of my personality to talk about racism and sexism whenever I can. When I was telling John about some things, he interrupted and said, It's so cool that you're black and Filipino. I guess this justifies my existence or something. Why else would someone compliment you on your race? She says this with a complimentary smile. I stare back with calculated indifference. To be cool is to make socially acceptable choices. I only have a choice in how I present myself to the world. I nodded, and she smiled again. What was she expecting? A thank you? I should have said... John said I got my athletics from my blackness and my intellect from my Asianness. What do you say to that? What does anyone say to that? Uh, thanks, but no thanks. Maybe he didn't mean for it to come out like that, the way it came out to me. But it did, and I guess that's all that matters. December 19th. I hung out with Allie at the park yesterday. We were just talking, which was nice since we barely have a chance to hang out at school. She told me, John was worried that you heard him say the N-word in English class. I didn't hear him say the N-word. She looked relieved and said, Good because he was really worried about it. I mean, he didn't want to be offensive or anything. February 15th. Vanessa embraces me with this phrase and a friendly hug. She's black Filipino too. I don't know whether I should smile or cringe. I don't like the N-word, never have. I guess it's because I've so memorized the anger behind my father's eyes when he uses the N-word to talk about the past. Go figure. April 2nd. Who am I? Why am I here? It's philosophical BS like that which is keeping me out of B-plus in philosophy. If my racial existence depends on the way others see me, then who am I? I don't know. Everyone sees people differently. Yes, Sart, I'm completely at odds with the other because they never see me the way I want to be seen. Thankfully, my racial identity doesn't depend on the way others see me at all. So justify your own goddamn existence. An existential, scientific, Freudian view on my genetic makeup and racial identity is not something I worry about every waking moment. And neither should you. Sugar Water